Hello, I'm Will. Welcome to my YouTube channel, my first YouTube video. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about me, an ordinary aquarist. I've had this tank here for about a year now. I picked it up second hand. It's a nice Fluval 180 Vicenza, uh, three foot wide, both front, and it's a, a nice community tank. I've got plenty of plants in there, running Fluval 307, got no CO2, I do use liquid fertilizer. My plants are pretty undemanding, uh, so I don't need to do too much with them. I'll give them a little trim here and there, rearrange them, move them around. Sometimes I'll move them between my different tanks if I want to just freshen up the look a bit. So let's go right back to the beginning. It was about 15 years ago, and I had a cold water tank with a couple of small goldfish in, the classic, you know, saw at Pets at Home, really liked them, perfect. For anyone not in the UK watching this, Pets at Home is your, your standard chain fish store, basically what, pet store. Uh, they do all sorts, rabbits, guinea pigs, hamsters, birds, and fish. And then my uncle upgraded his tank, so I was fortunate and inherited his tropical setup. Came with a bucket with some existing tank water, a few ornaments, some gravel, a few guppies, and really I just I used it a bit, maybe 40, 50 litres. And to me that was incredible. That you know the size of that I thought, wow as a child, that was excellent. And I didn't really do much. Sometimes I'd you know, be a struggle to do sort out the maintenance. I look at it, I'd enjoy it. Uh, but it was sometimes seen as a chore. I didn't love it and I didn't research it in any way. There wasn't the the online resource that there is nowadays uh, when looking at a new hobby. And I remember one day the excitement when I came down and I saw a little tiny fish. I was like, oh, I thought I made it up. I thought I dreamt it. My mum certainly thought I made it up. She came down and was like, no, you haven't, you haven't seen the baby fish. There's not a baby fish in there. I didn't know guppies were live bearers. I didn't know how easy it was to actually have uh, baby guppies. You know, had I had I known all that, I maybe would have been excited, but I remember that passion and thinking, wow, I've you know, created a life here. Granted it was a guppy, but that was the first fish I remember breeding completely unintentionally. And I probably should have remembered that when I bought this fish tank a year ago. And it was in the back of my mind, but I didn't really think about it. When I set it up, I started off some lamb chop reservoirs. I thought, let's go for a nice solid community. We'll get a few groups of six. We'll get a couple of slightly larger fish, um, some shrimp in there, some nice decor. I knew I wanted it really natural. Uh, I didn't want any fake plants. I wanted to be some cool feature stones in there, but some good rock uh, and some good wood pieces, along with some nice large plants and some smaller front plants. I really enjoyed it. And for the first six months, I, I learned a lot. Uh, I had a few fish pass away on me. I learned to slowly add fish. I built up relationships with my local fish stores. I've got three uh, quite nearby, so that's really handy. It's a great position to be in. Um, definitely don't underestimate the knowledge that you've got at your local fish store. Uh, go there, enjoy it. Think of it like a gallery. You know, you can just have a browse around, see what fish catches your eye. My top tip, if you're thinking about getting into fish keeping, is that you've got to have fish that you enjoy. You've got to have fish that you want to watch and you want to look after. You know, there's no point just having fish because it's a cool fish to have. It's got to be a fish you want to have. Now, I didn't do enough research into how difficult they can be to look after sometimes. And I saw I was like, that's the fish for me. I'll work out how to do it. And I fed him food. I gave him plenty of wood. Unfortunately, recently, there's been a few more chemicals in the water. I had a large ammonia spike, which followed with a nitrate spike. And I believe that was the cause I lost four fish overnight. And it was really saddening actually, you know, to, to look and you feel responsible, but that does happen to everybody. You know, fish do pass away unfortunately. Sometimes with the large volume of water, the larger the volume of water, ordinarily the easier it is to, to look after and keep. Uh, I'd just done a 40% water change the night before. And I think it was just the extra chemicals in the water. I hadn't allowed for that in my dechlorification. Uh, now, one thing I could have done is kept the water in a bucket overnight. Unfortunately, I don't have space to keep sort of 80 litres, 70 litres of water. Um, so it's not really an option for me to keep that separately, although there is a way to do it. I've only had that happen once in my year of fish keeping. Uh, so fingers crossed that it's just a, 
you know, just a little blip, but we'll see what happens. What I want to do is I want to share some of my journey, some of my tips, some of my adventures, uh, and some of what I've been doing with you. Uh, hopefully it'll, it'll give you a platform to inspire you, uh, to make you think, oh, yeah, I could maybe do a, a, a nice fish tank here in my home, in my living room. It's a project. There's a great community online. I've spent a lot of time watching videos from MD Fish Tanks. Got some really good content. Aquarium Co-op. Recently, I've gone to George Farmer's videos. There's a great aquascaping, uh, especially then look at the Green Aqua channel. You know, these guys, that's a whole different world. And that's something I'm looking at uh, getting into um, shortly. That there's some plans for that. Uh, at the moment, I wouldn't say this is particularly aquascaped as such. It's kind of a collection of plants. It's very natural, but there's not a particular flow or theme or story. It's just a lot in there. And this has sort of become a bit of a holding tank as well um, for for my next project, but that you'll have to wait and see what happens there. So in my fish tank, I've got a collection of fish. We've got some dwarf neon rainbows. There's the lamb chop rice borers. I've got some green neon tetras, some celestial pearl danios, and some five band pentazona barbs. They're one of my favorite fish, the pentazona barbs. I love the look of the tiger barb, but I couldn't have an aggressive fish. Uh, I saw these in the shop, did a bit of research, and you know, just really enjoyed them. Just down at the front here, we've got my two African dwarf frogs. They get on great with everyone else in there. They can be a little tricky to feed sometimes, but I find if you uh, feed as just as you're about to turn the lights out in the evening. Uh, if you tap on the glass is a tip that some people do do and that will just get them aware of what's you know they're, they're very short sighted uh, so sometimes they need a, a, an audible cue knowing that it's feeding time. Uh, mice is shrimp they absolutely love but feeding live mice is shrimp to them can be difficult because they swim around everywhere. Um, try to avoid frozen blood is the advice I've been given um, but then I've had some people say they feed frozen bloodworm and it's fantastic. So it's the issue. What you'll find in this hobby is that one person will tell you absolutely don't do something. Another person will tell you categorically do it. My aim is to, to sort of share with you my tips, uh, things that have worked for me, my experience. Just because it's worked for me doesn't mean it's going to work for anybody else. But equally, if it has worked for me, hopefully it can work for you and It'll give you a platform to, to understand what options are there, what you can do, and maybe give you a bit of inspiration. Um, I've got a couple of cool loaches in here, and they are just incredible. I've had a cool loach uh, in my first fish tank, and I absolutely love them. I've now got eight in there. Some days I will not see any. I can go a week, two weeks without seeing them, and then all of a sudden I'll see four or five all together, and it's, it's a great moment. I've got two polka dot loaches in here. My plan is to get more. They're very hard to come by. Um, my local fish store had one, and then when I was in the next time, I had another one, so I've got them. I prefer them to the yo-yo loach, where they look very similar. They're less aggressive. They're great when they swim around. At the moment, they're just on this wood here at the back, uh, and they're just chilling out, very well-natured. I've got uh, a couple of ottos. I've got six ottos in there, and six pygmy quarries. They're great, they'll swim together. Sometimes I'll come through and there'll be four or five of them just on the glass here all together, just chilling out, having a great time. Just come up to the back there on the wood, I've got my long fin calico brussonos. Um, she is probably about four inches long in body with tail, probably about eight, seven or eight inches long. She's fantastic, really elegant as she swims through the water. And then I've got uh, a few other fish dotted around and some shrimp as well. But so that's a bit about me, it's a bit of a welcome. Um, hopefully I'm going to create a few videos, I'm going to create some content that is interesting to you. Um, you know, there's plenty of, of content creators on YouTube. Hopefully I'll be able to give something a little bit different to what you might see already on YouTube. I am very much a, an ordinary aquarist. I've spent my own money on my tanks, I've bought things second hand. I've had to sort of get the best deals I can. For me, it's very much a hobby. I work full time. I live in a two bedroom flat. You know, I'm not in a position where I can have my own separate fish studio. I don't have that luxury. I don't have a room with 17 fish tanks in. I'm trying to work around an everyday house and everyday life, but enjoy my hobby. And I've currently got four tanks. 
I've got a 108 litre here and then I've got 360 litre tanks and I'm going to explain a bit more about those uh, through these series of videos. So welcome, thanks very much. If you're still listening then top work and we'll see you on the next video. Thanks very much.